Hey, Gobe here. Have you ever wondered if Arlen was really as bad as people have said? I mean, sure, he got nerfed a bunch, but have you considered that we are just using him wrong? Today's guide is on Arlen the self-sacrificing security chief. He is quite underrated due to our current safe playstyles and good old misinformation. We will be going through his stats, abilities, and idlons, along with his best relics and light cones, and then discuss his true playstyle by talking about his rotation and team compositions, which are super important. If you like these guides, I'm doing guides on every unit with in-depth research, so why not subscribe and take a look at them after this video. And finally, before we start, a massive thanks to the coolest theory crafter I know, Anemone Mir, for helping me with this guide. They have some of the most interesting TC thoughts I've ever seen. Anyway, let's begin. So Arlan is a 4 star gacha unit and is a lightning character that follows the destruction path. The destruction path is composed of flexible DPS units that are usually tankier than the standard DPS units, and have some survivability mixed in. At level 80, Arlan has a high base HP of 1199 and a low base defense of 330. He has a base attack of 599 and a base speed of 102. His energy cost is 110 and as a destruction unit his taunt value is 125, which is equal to a 26% chance of being hit in a standard team. This puts Arlen at one of the highest base HPs in the game, but he also has the lowest base defense in the game. This is a balancing thing as a high defense benefits him more than HP. He has an average base attack, but at 102 speed, he's the 10th fastest unit in the game right now. His energy cost of 110 is very nice too, better than most units in the game. Pretty decent stat line. Let's move on to his abilities. So Lightning Rush is his basic attack. It will do a standard amount of lightning damage to a single enemy. His basic attack will deal 30 toughness damage, regenerate 20 energy for Arlan, and regenerate a skill point for the team. His skill is Shackle Breaker. Arlen will consume 15% of his max HP to deal a large amount of lightning damage to a single enemy. If he is below 15% of his max HP, his health will be reduced to 1 and luckily not kill him. What's really cool about this is that Arlen will consume HP and not a skill point, meaning he is skill point neutral at all times and skill point positive if he starts using his basic attacks. At the cost of HP, he can do large damage without sacrificing your team's skill points. This skill will do 60 toughness damage and regenerate 30 energy for Arlen. Frenzied Punishment is his ultimate. It is a blast type attack and it will do a very large amount of lightning damage to the selected target and a decently large amount of lightning damage to adjacent enemies. This ultimate will do 60 toughness damage to all targets here and has a cost of 110 energy, refunding 5 energy on use. His talent is Pain and Anger or Bread and Anger for any viewers that don't speak French. This talent will increase Arlen's damage for every percent of HP below his max HP. This means at talent level 10, he can get up to a 72% self damage boost, which is the highest boost in the game, bar Zila, with the only condition being floating at 1 HP. To ramp up to this damage boost requires about 6 to 7 skills without accounting for enemy attacks. So whilst he does need to ramp up, it is well worth it if you can keep him there. Finally, here are his damage boosts for every skill used. Finally, we have his technique, Swift Harvest. It is an attacking technique, so use buffs before it. When he uses this, he will deal a good amount of lightning damage to all enemies. Not anything special, but its damage can go quite high if he joins the fight at low HP. Now let's take a look at his traces, which are pretty unique and pretty cool. His first trace passive is Revival. If he defeats an enemy when he is at 30% or lower of his max HP, he will restore 20% of his max HP. Now this can have anti-synergy with his damage buffs, but if you're bringing him to strong enemies, it won't proc too often and it's more just a safety tool. Killing an enemy is more important than keeping your damage buff, so this is whatever. His second trace passive is much cooler. Endurance will give Arlen a 50% chance to resist dot debuffs. 50% debuff resistance is massive. If we assume elites have a 100% chance to inflict their dot effects and a base effect hit rate of 32%, they will only have 66% chance to inflict darts on Arlen. We don't know the exact base chances enemies have in some cases, but he essentially halves the chance of every dot in the game from being applied to him. Let's just say we should be happy no enemy has this effect. Arlen's third trace passive is Repel. Upon entering battle, if he has less than half of his max health, 
He will have a one-time damage nullifier, meaning the first instance of damage he takes, except for damage over time, will be stopped. This is a great passive for keeping momentum. When transferring from another battle at low HP, so in Memory of Chaos or Simulator Universe, this saves him from any early accidents that could kill him, and keeps his ramping damage boost from battle to battle. It is useless on any first battles though. His trace bonuses give him 12% effect resistance, which is awesome for his risky playstyle and reducing the enemy dot chances even further to 58% chance now. His other bonuses are in attack percent, which is great, and HP percent, which is whatever. For trace priority, his skill is what he will be spamming to ramp up, so it's ideal to max his first. And then his talent and ultimate will take next priority. His basics, as we will see, can be useful, but don't need to be leveled. Let's now look at his Eidolons. His first is to the bitter end. When his HP is at 50% or low of his max HP, his skill damage will be increased by 10%. The skill has a high base multiplier and he will always flow under 50% HP, so this is an awesome first boost. His second Eidolon is actually a Queen Song. Using his skill ultimate will remove one debuff from himself. This is such a great second Eidolon and cleanse is very rare. This is very strong for his playstyle. If the enemy does manage to apply a dot onto Arlan, his skill can be used to then remove it, guaranteeing that dot should never be a problem for him. This also working on his ultimate means you can remove debuffs whenever, provided your ultimate is up, saving you in situations without shields. The only problem is crowd control effects as they will prevent you from using your ultimate. His fourth Eidolon is Turn the Tables. After entering battle, when struck by a killing blow, Arlan will not be knocked down and instead restore 25% of his max HP. When this is used or after 2 turns from the start of the battle, this effect will be removed. So it's not too amazing but can actually help you when you transfer to another fight in Memory of Chaos or Simulated Universe. This combined with his trace passive which gives him a damage nullifier, means your talent on the second fight will immediately be at high value without any risk of dying. No ramp up required means Arlen can do tons of early damage and transition into his next playstyle which we'll get onto after. His final Eidolon is Self Sacrifice, and it is a great way to end his Eidolons. When he drops to under half health, which is pretty easy, his ultimate will do 20% more damage. At a high base multiplier, this is pretty great. But on top of that, the damage multiplier taken by the target enemy, so 320% at level 10, will now apply to adjacent enemies too. That is 960% multiply value in an AoE situation, which is pretty disgusting, and it isn't counting the large amount of self damage buffs he can give himself. For his best relics, you will want to go the Band of Sizzling Thunder set. The lightning damage percent is nice, but Arnon loves attack buffs due to his already high damage. This 20% attack buff will apply for the skill he uses it on, and then his next turn. So since he will be spamming skills, this is perfect. A permanent 20% attack buff. And the attack buff can boost any basics or ultimates in between. For his planar ornament set, you can go either Space Sealing Station or Inner Sao Soto whichever you've got better gear of. So for main stats, you want to go crit on the chest piece, attack percent on the boots, lightning damage percent on the orb, and attack percent on the rope. For substats, prioritize crit, attack, and speed. Speed to 120 is a good breakpoint for space sealing station. We don't run speed on the boots because we want the preservation unit to always take turns before Arlen, ensuring he doesn't die. But speed substats are still good. For light cones, do not go healing light cones, they are bait and they have anti-synergy with his kit. Attack percent buffing light cones are very very strong because of his already high base damage percent bonuses. With the lightning planar sphere and his max talent potential, he has 111% damage buffs already. This puts his skill damage at 5112. S5 of a secret vow will give him an 80% damage bonus at his full potential, since his HP percent will always be under the enemy's HP percent. This puts his damage at 7051. At S5 of the Moles Welcome You, he will get a 72% attack buff instead, bringing his damage to 6791, almost beating his signature light cone. With his Eidolons, the attack percent bonuses become even stronger due to even more self damage percent buffs. So, for his best light cone, On the Fall of an Eon will be his best, due to it being S5 for free. If you can weakness break occasionally on top, which is pretty easy for him, it beats his signature at S5. His next best in slot will be his signature, a secret vow, followed by the Moles Welcome You. 
If your Moles Light Cone is one Super Imposition high than a Secret Vow, it will be better than a Secret Vow. So S5 Moles beats S4 Secret Vow. Mutual Demise, the 3 star, is a great early game boost, and since he can always trigger it, he gets a permanent 24% crit rate buff. Now let's discuss his playstyle and team compositions. Most people take Arlen as a unit that provides skill points, but then takes them away because of the need of others shielding him or healing him. Now that's only half true. Arlen's true playstyle is as a second DPS, and by not bringing a healer and to actually keep him floating at 1 HP. So shielding is still mandatory and Jeppard or Fire MC will be needed, and March cannot work. Jeppard doesn't need skill points, so the skill point statement is incorrect in that regard. Fire MC, however, will need to use skill points, but not only will it be beneficial for Arlen, it will be highly beneficial for the whole team's survivability. Very important when you have no healer. You can bring in Abundance if you want, such as Bailu for Lightning Breaks, and Arlen will still contribute due to his skill point conversion and high break potential, but you are sacrificing a lot of his damage. Alongside of Preservation, you'll want to bring a main DPS that preferably loves skill points, like Zealer. And then finally, thanks to not having an Abundance unit, you can bring a buffer or debuffer. This solo sustain comp means you can have some insane damage. Debuffers like Silver Wolf and Paler, as I've said in my guides, will benefit dual DPS setups immensely. Since their damage boosts are dependent on enemy turns and not ally turns, effectively boosting the whole team. So to play him, you will want to ramp up by using his skill and consuming his health for his large talent bonus. Once at a low HP, he can then adopt a completely new playstyle. You can effectively use him as a switch at any point. Turning this switch on will make Arlen a skill point generator by using his basics. If Zeela needs a skill point for resurgence or Fire MC needs to taunt, Arlen can basic and not lose out. Since he is not the main DPS, basics are fine and since his ultimate isn't a game changer, just pure damage, you don't need to plan for it with rotations. His basics also do a nice amount of damage due to his self damage buffs. So 3 skills which will bring him to 55% max HP and a damage bonus of 32% as well as a basic attack will let him hit his ultimate and generate 1 skill point for the team. If he ever gets hit, which is likely in AoE situations and which he can tank thanks to the shielding, you can use a basic over one of the 3 skills and thus generate 2 skill points. He effectively brings a ton of damage to the team outside of his kit, because you don't bring a healer in a 4 slot, and you provide a lot of skill points for the main carry. Why bring a healer with your Bronya and Zela when you can bring a skill point generator and high damage dealer with your Bronya and Zela, just by playing a bit riskier? So for an example team composition, you always need Jepard or Fire MC, or any future preservation unit that works like them. So you can go Fire MC, Pella, Zela, and Arlen, and Arlen will want to be on the opposite side of the preservation unit. Fire MC will taunt every turn to avoid Arlen dying as well as give damage resistance and shielding. This means you'll need to build 67% effect hit rate on Fire MC to always guarantee your taunt. 50% is needed for the Bellabog 2 piece bonus so this isn't hard to get when going effect hit rate chest, which I recommend. Arlen will provide Zela with skill points so she can go ham on any enemy. Pella is great for dual DPS setups and can remove nasty buffs from enemies that could destroy Arlen. Zela can be replaced by any strong skill point heavy main DPS. For a complete whale version, Jepard in the place of Fire MC, Silver Wolf or Bronya in the place of Pella can also work. It follows the same principle except Jepard will taunt naturally alongside a taunt light cone and has great shields and shield uptime. Silver Wolf or Bronya, they're both Bronya, provide immense damage buffs to the team and especially for Zela, who will be loving her time here. Silver Wolf provides a lot of break potential which increases your survivability. So that's all on Arlen, but you always need a preservation unit by his side, so watch my Fire MC guide to learn how to build them, and I'll get a Jeppard one out soon. If you like this guide, like and consider subscribing, and comment your thoughts and takes on Arlen. Thanks for watching, have a go day.